What if you never waited at another red light ever again? It's the 100th episode of Forward Thinking. 99 shows ago, I launched this series with a discussion about the Internet of Things. In case you've forgotten, that's a term that describes a world filled with sensors and actuators and robots and computers that are all networked together and able to communicate with even larger networks. Now, in that first episode, I really focused on how the Internet of Things could affect our day-to-day -day lives in our own homes. You know, changing them from an elegant area of class to a slinging disco party with no effort whatsoever However, but it turns out the Internet of Things is much, much bigger. Let's really think about the potential for a world filled with devices that can detect changing conditions and react so quickly it makes the blink of an eye look like an eternity. You're driving down the street on your way to work, and you're using your car's navigation system to give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to cut down on commute time. Your car is communicating with sensors embedded in the environment, telling it the presence of other cars and bicyclists, even a pedestrian crossing the street two blocks ahead. Your car is also in constant communication with the city's traffic system. All of these sensors are working together to give you a smooth commute experience, cutting down on things that would frustrate you and funneling you through the best route, clearing your path of red lights and other delays. Now, doesn't that sound nice? I mean, this is a world that doesn't just react to what you need right now. It anticipates what you're going to need five minutes from now. It's like living a life of serendipity, an endless run of good luck. But it's not good luck. It's the Internet of Things, and it's working overtime on your behalf. But just to be clear, it's not all about you. The Internet of Things is going to enter industries like manufacturing and shipping, making them adaptable and responsive systems and increasing their efficiency. And with increased efficiency comes lower costs. It's an incredible vision of the future. To get there, scientists, engineers, and researchers are going to have to overcome some big challenges. We've talked about spectrum crunch on this show before. There are only so many wireless frequencies we can use, and you can actually hit capacity within any given area. Now, the good news is, most of these devices in the Internet of Things are speaking in very small amounts of data. But when you have millions or potentially even billions of devices talking, it adds up pretty quickly. Then there's the cost. Now, the components in the Internet of Things are still under development. Like sensors, they're pretty expensive. And other elements within the Internet of Things are even more so. So bringing costs down is one of the largest challenges we face today. Personally, I don't think any of these challenges are insurmountable. In fact, in 20 years' time, I think a lot of the things that frustrate us today will be a distant memory. No more traffic jams. No more leaving the grocery store and then realizing you forgot that one ingredient you needed to make dinner. And 20 years from then, I don't know. Do you think maybe good luck will just fade into obscurity? It won't mean anything anymore because that's what our lives will be? I sure hope so. Now, it's no secret that I'm an optimist, but I think this is a future that's worth striving toward. And guys, happy 100 episodes. What topic that we've covered already was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And hey, if you've got a suggestion for a future topic, leave that one in there too. We read every single comment, I promise. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like, and if you haven't subscribed already, what more do I need to do? I've done 100 of these things. Tell you what, I'll do another 100, but you gotta subscribe. And then, enjoy some of these videos.